John Dowerpool. I'm a senior image processing engineer for Lockheed Martin. I'm also a grad student studying applied and computational mathematics at Johns Hopkins University. Um, but I'm actually representing one of those today. This is just a passion project of mine, a geospatial map, um, related to assistant road surface tagging. I'm um, using machine learning. And this won't be a, a technical presentation, actually. This is more of a, a success story about how I was able to um, yeah, how I was able to build this uh, model with um, incredible accuracy for road surface tagging. So some of the background um, story starts really like 15, 16 years ago. Um, a lot of the OSM road network data in the United States came from um, the Tiger data set. It's a, a federally provided data set um, that included very little metadata, just uh, the road name and rough traces of, of where the roads are. Um, since then, OSM has been really reliant on the contributors to clean up that data, um, called the, the Tiger Fix-Up, if you will, um, and to keep those contributions, uh, like keep those roads up to date. Um, but especially in rural areas, the flyover states, um, there's really not many OSM contributors. Um, even in cities, you know, we, we have very few contributors in the U.S. per like unit area, if you will. Um, so especially in rural areas, um, the quality of the road network and just the associated metadata with roads is pretty low. Um, so once again, uh, Tiger Fix Up is underway. Uh, a lot of the road names and highway classifications are fixed, and that's how we have a nice base map for road networks today. Um, but actual review of the Tiger data, especially in rural areas, is unlikely. Um, there's little interest from armchair mappers for random farms in the middle of Kansas, for the most part, right? Um, and just really no contributors in these areas. Um, and I would apologize for like this really uh, dense figure here, but that's kind of the point. This is, you know, around Denver um, and Northeast Colorado. Um, everything highlighted is um, things that were imported from Tiger, but still marked unreviewed. Um, and that's most roads. And if I just scroll a little bit to the east to Kansas, um, it's even worse. It's like all of the roads um, other than really centered around some of the, the tighter towns. Um, so if we want to use OSM to improve routing and have OSM-based routers uh, work really, really well, especially in rural areas, um, we really need additional tags um, other than just the, the, Mac, or the, the road names um, and highway classifications that we have right now. One of them is max speed, um, but here six exists that can improve that using like uh, local laws, usually, you know, residential speed limits are like 25 miles an hour or some along those lines. Um, but road surface is um, the big one I was focusing on. Um, knowing whether or not roads are paved or unpaved. Um, so here was a, a really big opportunity for improvement. Um, the USGS, the United States Geological Survey, um, have their National Agriculture Imagery Program, which provides one meter resolution imagery, um, RGB and near infrared, uh, with complete United States coverage, and it's in the public domain. Um, so this is a, a really, really big opportunity to use satellite imagery to improve OSM, um, and specifically with road surface. Um, and it's hosted for free from a, a bunch of different sources, so it's very easy to access. Um, so I developed what I'm calling the OSM Road Surface Classifier. Um, and basically, you give it um, just input imagery and OSM metadata um, from the National Agriculture Imagery Program. It generates a segmentation mask of where a road is based on the OSM metadata. And then it provides a classification of paved or unpaved. Um, and then an obscuration value of... Uh, kind of its confidence, um, how much of the road is obscured by trees or buildings or something like that. Um, and it turned out impressive. It has 96% uh, accuracy on paved roads and 95% accuracy on unpaved roads. Um, and that's for all different levels of tree obscuration. Um, to put this in context, usually a good rule of thumb is like 85, 90% for like an ML model to be ready to go. We're talking 95%. This is this is a really, really good model and it's it's all ready to go. Um, so what's next? I, I want to uh, recruit help from <laughs> anybody and uh, their companies that they have compute resources um, to be able to allow me to publish a data set for predicted service tags in the United States. The National Agriculture Imagery Program includes a bunch of imagery and you know I can't really do it on my home computer in a realistic amount of time. I would love to be able to scale this um, across the United States. I feel like this can assist or augment um, any OSM-based uh, router heuristics, uh, Project OSRM, Valhalla, Cycle.Travel. Um, and I'd love to integrate with JOSM and Rapid um, to suggest uh, surface tags. So once again, 
uh, fewer your company um, would be able to pitch compute resources to potentially run this model um, across the United States, um, I would love to. So once again, my name is John Dalrymple. Here's a, a QR code to my project. Um, there's my email right there. Thank you so much. Yeah.